And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here again. Another week has flown by fast, as it always does. Oh, greetings, greetings everyone and welcome to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host. James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, and I am here at the uh, at the Mega Life 21 and Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey, and I would like to uh, formally introduce my uh, co-host and mentor and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the one and only the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Yeah. Yeah. Tis the season. Tis the season for um, pollen. I Actually, the pollen I, I, is very moderate, that right? Yeah, thank God. I was so in a hurry. I was a little behind as usual because I was multitasking before I came here. Um, that I forgot to take. I, well, I did take a homeopathic uh, allergy pills, and I did bring a bottle of them, of homeopathic allergy tablets, but I was going to take a Benadryl, but it would have pretty much put me to sleep. That's something we, we don't want our viewers to do. <laughs> to be put to sleep. The levity bells. But uh, I would like to say... Hello, greetings to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. And uh, all of my Facebook uh, group administrators, every one of them. <clears throat> and uh, you know who you are. And uh, I would like to um, say... Uh, that there will be an uncensored pro wrestling talk coming up, part two with uh, the one and only the Peacemaker, but he's not coming on the second time to make any peace. Uh -huh. He's fuming, he's furious, and we are going to expose quite a bit in a very typical, unrehearsed, no holds barred fashion, uncensored pro wrestling talk that I like to do which uh, is the uh, the kind of like similar to what we do with politics uncensored unrehearsed ad lib except this is with pro wrestling talk mm -hmm. but there's way too much sleaziness going on for too many years in that business with with workers being exploited and it goes on and on and on and it doesn't end and we will discuss the reasons why it hasn't ended yet. And of course, just like corporate America, corporate CEOs and conservative politicians, <laughs> these promoters do what they do to fill their pockets with no remorse. It's like a, a sociopath, right? When they, they do selfish things to uh, at the ex with the at the expense of others and feel no remorse for doing it. Business has been doing that, you know, like forever. Not giving a shit about who they hurt or who they use. Of course. Uh, example of doing rotten things with no remorse. I was reading an article before I came here that the state of Michigan is. Uh, planning on uh, taking away poor families of food stamps uh, if their children miss classes in school. Any and excuse. I, I, more punishment of the poor. Any excuse. 
the war on the poor, the class warfare on the poor, started and perpetuated by the rich. It just goes on and on with all of these new nitpicky schemes to take away help from the poor in all ways possible. Yeah. But it's okay to give help to the rich in taxpayers' money with subsidies, corporate welfare. Oh, it's okay to give to the rich, Republicans, but it's not okay to help the poor. What's the Bible say? That the, the rich have the poor in their sights. And the other one about oppressing them? Oh, yeah. He who gives to the rich uh, uh, by oppressing the poor shall surely come to want. He uh, yeah, the, yeah. The rich get if the rich get rich by oppressing the poor, and he who gives to the rich shall surely come to want. Also, uh, as the nail sticketh between two stones, so does sin stick to buying and selling. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like uh, God is too fond of capitalism, does it? Well, it doesn't sound like God is too fond of business as usual. And conservatives. Okay. Jesus was definitely far, far from conservatism. Now, conservatism and liberal are character structures. Right. Democrat and Republican are parties. Right. Okay. Well, we're talking about doing the right thing. It, it, it gets down to doing the right thing. Well, yeah, but Jesus yeah. had nothing to do with politics. No, he's, he's a divine uh, being. He's, he, politics is if like... You want to, if you want to try to see God's kingdom as politics, it's fascism with a heart. Because it's rule from the top down. And, and, and you are... And no humans involved. And you are rest assured that the ruler in the fascist system always 100% has your best interest at and heart. System, you can yes. trust the ruler being God. But not in fascism, per, you know. No, not in, not in human uh, uh, worldly materialism fascism mm -hmm. on, the, on the earth, because this is Satan's world, of course. That's great. Uh, this is all part of our series, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. So, if I forgot to salute the peacemaker, I salute him right now. You can Google his name, uh, Professional Wrestling Peacemaker, ECPW Peacemaker, Mega Life 21 Peacemaker, and you'll see the first show I did with him. So, I salute him. And uh, also, the sensational Bernie Sanders, a huge, hey, hey. A huge salute to you. It sounds like Bernie Sanders is not that worried about his campaign funds. He says he says he's doing fine. Well, guess who announced today? Who announced to, to, to throw their hat in the race? Uh, bonnet. Uh, Her uh, bonnet. Pee Wee Herman? Her bonnet. Who the fuck is that? Say that again? She threw her bonnet into the... Oh, room. oh, a, a she? Yeah, Elizabeth a Warren? Hillary Clinton! Oh, big deal. That's all I see is Hillary's face all over I the know, internet. I know, but she did not announce internet. then. Now there is an official announcement. So she's fashionably late. No, it has to do with the legalities of, you know, the Federal Election Committee. Well, good. She has a, she has a, a, enough dirt and skeletons in her yeah. closet for other people to pick on. You know. Well, it's official. Okay. That's all. Well, it's official. It's official. Excuse me, because I forgot my prop. Oh my God! Mustn't forget. Mustn't forget the old siphon. Everything you were told, jabronis out there. Tea baggers wouldn't understand because they're they're too brain cell deficient to understand this. 
what all you jabronis out there that were that grew up learning from Ronald Reagan and other um, crony capitalists and conservatives about trickle-down economics it was just it just sounded good it was it was it's, it was good on paper and out of their mouths but it never I worked wasn't so good about it no, there's nothing good about it if, yeah. if if the jobs were forced to remain in the United States then and and it actually trickled down not like Pope Francis says where the wine the glass of red wine is filling up and all of a sudden when it gets ready to spill over and trickle down to the people the wine glass gets bigger and as it, the wine rises the wine glass continues to get larger and nothing trickles down well anyway this is the siphon what you have is siphon up to the top 20 percent whatever oligarchy plutocracy whatever you want to call it the devil's economics siphon up devil's economics there is no trickle down this is a siphon. But anyway, uh, that's what we have here. That's all part capitalism in a conch show, people. Uh, yesterday was brutal. Uh, we went the, uh, from winter into summer directly, like the Reverend Dr. Bill predicted. It was, the air was very hot. It was over 90. And I think today is hot also. Uh, I was just informed it was 85, but it's probably maybe 86 or 7. With the with the heat indexed that they call oh, the, the humidity is high. Yeah, when the humidity is high, it's the heat index because it intensifies the heat. Yeah. I can handle dry heat with no problem because when I was in, on Margarita Island, Venezuela, many years ago, it was over 100 degrees, bone dry. Because there's cactus everywhere. Really? Yeah, it's, it's a dry. Out in the ocean, cactus? Yeah, believe it or not, the rainfall is so no little. coconut trees? No, no, the rainfall, no, the coconut trees were dying. Really? The, the rainfall is so li is so minute in the southern Caribbean mm -hmm. that the islands are like Arizona, and it was all... Like deserts. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, but you didn't... You didn't feel it because it was bone dry, mm -hmm. which is proof that the humidity makes it bad. But, um, you know, I mean, yes, it's better than the horrible winter we had, but if you can't breathe, and now I understand why it's dangerous for senior citizens not to have air conditioning, just like when they don't have heat in the winter, you, if you, you cannot breathe with that kind of heat. But anyway, let me just get my Chisler's Hall of Shame over with. I don't have a lot to say, but um, first of all, I want to start out by saying uh, shame on you, American-made products. In this case, uh, our Sears Kenmore microwave uh, died. But we did have... It well, you have appliances dying all over the place. But we did... Yeah, graveyard. We, we did have it for a while, but not as long as you think. So it just... I used it the other day, and then I used it. tried to use it a second time just to warm up things. I don't use it to cook, no way. And it died, so... Shame so on you. Dead, uh, or does it have a reset button? No, I tried everything. Shame on you, American-made products. You all suck. Sears, shame on you. Uh, it doesn't have the warranty that the uh, the Sears Craftsman tools have. I know they have a lifetime warranty. Good. Now, the second thing is, I'm very disappointed in my favorite buffet. The Flaming Grill Buffet. Shame on you. You're in the Chisler's Hall of Shame this week because... I went there for lunch and I noticed it's not seven dollars and forty cents anymore they raised the price to seven dollars and ninety nine cents uh -huh. for lunch why simply because they got so popular uh -huh. and when all restaurants start out they start off very humble uh -huh. and 
and when they start to get busier and busier and busier sometimes they renew their menus and they get new menus and they use that as an excuse to raise the prices almost always 100 percent of the time when there's a new menu and a little remodeling the prices are all jacked up in this case the place got more popular busier packed on a weekend so they jacked up the price but that's not the sole reason why I'm inducting you into the Chiseler's Hall of Shame. The main reason is that the there was a, a noticeable downgrade in the quality of the food with the rise in price from, oh. from $7.40 to $7.99 for Good lunch. Oh. All, many of the uh, entrees in the buffet, like a lot of the n the good entrees are gone, like the roast duck, you know, a lot of them are not there. The, ma not. the, the marinated New Zealand green tip mussels was not there that I, 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 I was looking forward to eating. Mm -hmm. Big mussels, they were, but they're nice, they're marinated. It's in the salad section. Not there. Uh, the um, the grilled food display that are grilled and put over a, a, a warming tray was gone. They just had the Mongolian barbecue where you you fix your plate made to order and then they stir fry it. But the barbecue section where you can select what you want is gone. Mm. And the best for the last, most of the entrees seem to be all of a sudden, all variations of white floured noodles and white rice. And the meat in almost everything was chicken. So what, what, what comes to mind when you think of white rice, white floured noodles, and chicken? They all have one thing in common. Sheep. They downgraded the well, cost. What do they say? Don't they say that all the uh, alligator and all these meats they taste like chicken? Yeah. Well, when I told them about the you raised the price, they just smiled at me. And, of you know. course. What are they gonna do? Oh, James. Oh, don't tell you, don't expose that to people. Uh, well, I'm exposing it now. The restaurant industry. This is not just the flaming grill buffet, but this is a pattern with the restaurant business in the United States. Maybe overseas in tourist trap areas and resort areas they do the same thing but it's all part of capitalism retail does the same thing retail and the restaurant industry in capitalism underhanded tactics dishonest crooks well that's, that's it that's all the boycott and we'll see if they're uh, lower their prices only if Americans only boycott it. Uh, the power in the, the power in the boycott. But Americans don't stick together like that and boycott. That's one thing I gotta say about African Americans, about blacks. When they're pissed off about something, they will stick together and boycott. I mean, I, I, Hispanics too, to a certain extent. But the American way is usually, unfortunately, every man and woman for themselves. It's about Unfortun me. Unfortunately, it's the me, 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 I, I generation. Uh, I, 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 me, me, me. Uh, it's, it's the get way of life, not the give way of life. Well, you can, you, you see it even in, uh, even in workers who, who uh, bad mouth their unions. Oh yeah, whistleblowers are demonized. Uh, uh, if you, if you have an opinion, if you have an opinion and it's contrary to the powers that be if you if you call them out and you expose anybody bad uh, they don't like it in this in, in, well it's not just capitalism it's any any system run by humans they they don't like it when um, when you do the right thing when their mistakes and foibles are pointed out to them yeah okay yeah the well, fool does not wish to be educated. He's a fool. Hey, even Cole, speaking of exposing, even General Colin Powell admitted 
that there's a tremendous amount of racism in the Republican Party. And the, and the only reason... What the, they do? That, like this is a secret for how many years? And the only reason... The only reason for persecuting Barack Obama is, is for his, the color of well, his skin. Well, what the hell is Colin Powell a, a Republican for? Yeah, it's a good question. The hypocrite. Should be an independent. Jesus. Why is he still a Republican, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh... You know, it's like, uh, well, with the Republicans, uh, anybody who is not part of their ilk is under a microscope. No matter how silly and trivial it is, you're under a microscope. But if you put them under a microscope, they cry like babies. And they have a tantrum. So, it's like, you know, oh, it's like a, a spoiled little rich kid that doesn't want to share his toys with his cousins, you know. It's like me, me, me. You know, if I don't get my way, I'm going to take a tantrum. And the and the funny part is the media gives them FaceTime, but they don't give FaceTime to the normal people in politics. Ain't that a bitch? The nice people in politics. Ain't that a bitch? Rebuttaling. What was that show I used to watch uh, when I was a kid? It was a local New York City show where they had. You had somebody ranting about something, and then you had someone else rebuttaling them. Joe Pine. No. Burke. We, no, they're before. No, I was too young when they were around. Um, uh, the was one it, with the. Was it uh, Martin Aben? Uh, David Suskind? Was it David? Could have been Suskind. Yeah, you you always but had. Suskind was more mainstream. Yeah. Well, you had the. Um, the Burks and the. Yeah, you had the. Uh, um, the two sides represented. The pros versus the cons. This was obviously before Reagan. You mean you mean fair when the fairness doctrine went bye bye. Yeah, in okay. fairness in journalism. In anything. Politics too. Um, Fox News would not exist if there was a fairness doctrine. Well, Fox News would be an entertainment channel. It could do that. Satire. It would not have anything to do with like politics and stuff because it would have to broadcast the other side. It wouldn't be taken seriously. No, it would have to broadcast the other yeah. side. It's like it's like comparing fairness doctrine. It's like comparing, let's say, Major League Baseball or the NFL to pro wrestling. It's like, you know, you can't you can't throw them both in the same athletic category, you know. It's like like Fox News would be considered Political entertainment, satire. If we had a fairness doctrine, because they would they would look like fools. Well, they already it would did. not exist. Period. Nobody in their it right mind. It would not mind. be satire. It would not be politics. They would not exist. They only exist yeah. because the fairness doctrine is not there. Well, John Stewart and, and uh, uh, Stephen Colbert would lose a lot of material, a lot of comedy material. You no, know, they, they grant the other side. Well, it's not, it's not a lot. Their say it, now and then. It's not, not, it's not a lot of comedy with uh, no. with uh, progressives, progressive liberals. Uh, I mean, you can always pick on Sarah Palin, you know, uh, Ber uh, Bernice Anders, Bernice Anders. You know, you can always pick on her, uh, morons like her, Michelle Bachman. Uh, uh, Mike Huckabee, Fuckabee Huckabee, uh, um, uh, Ted Cruz, you know. Ricky Baby, Santorum. Yeah, Rick Santorum is, is a really, he's really clowns. out there, man. They're bonkers. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of material with the Republican clown bus. Yeah. Plenty of comedy material there. Uh, uh, Fiorina, that uh, ugly bitch. Fiorina, was her name Carly Fiorina? What an ugly bitch she is. Um, and the list goes on and on. Anyway, the biggest joke is the right wing. So, does that mean I have to listen to her? Does she have to go like. She might shit on the floor. She might, oh, you know, in other words, she might have to, to actually go. Talking about a cat. And do something. Oh. 
Well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm not opening the door too often. Not during broadcast. There we go. Well, she ran. She ran. She ran, so she must have to do something. She must have to do something. And of course, because of her, I messed up the background. That's old Beelzebub trying to mess with old James over here. Old Glory. In the form of a cat, which is familiar. Old Glory. Trying to fuck with the show. Wasting valuable time. Pisses me off. All right. Let us sink our teeth now. Unless you want them. Uh, excuse me. You want to say something about the getting back to that horrible article about Michigan wanting to take away food stamps if the well, child. It's not, it's, it's not horrible because the, we see it everywhere. They the, use any excuse they can. But this to is cut those. But this is but items. this is new to me. Uh, if the child misses class, they're well, threatening to take away their SNAP. Yeah. Well, whatever. What? But they view. You, they, they've used other excuses. But you know what's Not more important? Michigan, all these things. You know what's Republicans. more important than these ridiculous uh, ex nitpicky, petty reasons to take away people's welfare? The poor. What's even, what, what gets to me even more is the fact that we're talking about traditional northern blue states. Michigan. Yeah. Wisconsin. New Jersey with Chris Christie. These are northern blue states that have elected and re-elected conservatives. Yeah. Anti-little guy, anti-poor, anti-women, anti-minority uh, people of color, anti-doing uh, uh, the right thing, conservatives. Northern states. That's how fucked up it's, it, it, Americans have become. It's not just the the Americans in the red states, the redneck uh, red state teabaggers. Yeah, still fighting the Civil War. It's still fighting the Civil War. It's yeah. the North that is now brainwashed. Why are why are people that are that are living week to week to survive? Why are they voting for and reelecting Republicans in blue states? Minnesota is doing just great with a, a Democrat governor. Yep. From what I hear, the, the, things are going quite well in Minnesota. Yep. yep. You know, compared to the neighboring states. Yep. Uh, Wisconsin and Michigan. You know, mm -hmm. they reelected Chris Christie in, in a in a traditional de uh, Democratic state of New Jersey. But then again, New Jersey New Jerseyans are are, are strange. They 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 elected uh, Christy Whitman. Who was a Republican? Yeah. They elected Tom Kane, who was a Republican. Yeah. Then they they turned around, and they elected uh, uh, a a a a billionaire Good. Democrat. Now you figure Good. that out, John Corzine, who is a former Goldman Sachs boy. Why is he a Democrat? I have no idea. But they elected him. They elect all these corporatists. So New Jersey is a. Sh There's more to New Jersey than meets the eye. I have a feeling, something not kosher about New Jersey. Why would. Why would people that, that are just struggling, in, in a traditional northern blue state, vote for a Republican? I think maybe some of it, besides the social, crap, is what you had in your hand before. A the siphon. A, a shillelagh? Oh, a the siphon. siphon. You mean demonizing, like, uh, no, spending? No, they believe in that trickle-down crap. Uh, 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 a big wave lifting all boats. Don't they see that the jobs are being outsourced? Uh, I don't think so. They don't Obviously see it. they don't. Because you have people on Facebook constantly well, if you want a better job, you just got to go somewhere else. Or you got to improve your well, my Well, un my uncle used to tell me uh, when he got tired of um, get a job with a big uh, blue, blue chip, chip, blue chip yeah. company and they'll take care of you, you know, and blah, yada, yada, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. After that, he started telling me, you 
may have to relocate to Silicon Valley, there California, yes, because yes. that's where the jobs are going. Yes. You gotta go where the jobs are. What if you gotta relocate to China? Just pick up and leave. That's or where India. that's where a lot of them are. The office jobs are in the Philippines. Yeah. Ninety-five percent of the time of offices that I have, I call. The girl picks up with a Philippine accent. Well, you're lucky you don't get an Indian accent because I still can't understand those people. Honestly, honestly, I know, I know, many are college graduates, but I cannot understand the Indian accent. I'm sorry, I just can't understand it. You know, they talk fast too. Yeah. Maybe that's part of the problem. But anyway, uh, yeah, the the jobs are outsourced. I don't understand the logic, but there is no common sense and logic with today's Americans. It seems, no matter where they live. It seems that uh, it see it might have something to do with the the uh, worship or the revering of those above you, because there is all this support for the corporations. Why? You think that's that's why? May, you think that's maybe the reason why all the uh, programs and sitcoms on TV are about rich people and and no more. They're not about poor folk. Oh, well, we ain't got the Jeffersons anymore. The Jeffersons, no. Well, the Jeffersons didn't stay in Queens, living next to Archie Bunker. Well, they, they were moving up. They were moving up. They're moving on up to the east side, to yeah. the deluxe apartment in the sky. Yeah. Then you had everybody else was was well off, financially independent. Well, Jimmy Walker, that's, uh, he wasn't. They yeah, weren't. but that was back in the day. Good yeah. times. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, Fred Sanford. Sanford and Son. Yeah. These were about about poor people. Uh, no, we're talking about after that. Uh -huh. It was all about the rich. So, Americans, all they see is the multimillionaire or billionaire, and right away they think. Oh gee, they, they must have done some things right to get where they are. And I can be like that one day. And I can be like yes, that one day. I can, it's America. Uh, upward mobility. Don't they, don't they also realize that in a crony capitalist system, uh, it, it, the, the people that have become wealthy and even wealthier may not have gotten their Honestly, they, I, I don't. A, a lot of them, I believe, do not understand that the system is rigged. Monetary, they don't get it. monetary gain, monetary wealth is not necessarily uh, 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 acquired in a positive, honest, good way. Of course not. The United States owns the finances of the world, and it controls them, manipulates them, and rigs them. Systems rigged. You try to tell that to people who, uh, who, um, at least, uh, at least I'm smart enough to realize that my history books were full of shit. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, yes. they're all sugar coated, and and, and 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 they leave out not 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 necessarily it was all lies. There were some lies, some half partial truths, but a lot of the the real story were left out of the history books and, and and nothing in there about the genocide of Native Americans nothing in there about the slave trade uh, you know they didn't they just didn't teach kids any of this and um, um, somebody some idiot posted a banner about if you if you teach your kids that hell or this uh, any form of hell <clears throat> uh, 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 exists if you're if you're not saved and if you're bad and after you die you, you this is where you go it's considered child abuse so so that means parents are supposed to sugarcoat everything and, and for their children not teach them reality about anything well certainly hell is not reality no what I mean is what it's I not mean in the Bible what I mean Period. is it, it, education. We're talking about judgment. Education should be well rounded. Yeah, on an ass once in a while. You whack the ass now, now and then. Yeah. You know. Well, it, punishment. Punishment. Wh wh look, whether you say hell 
or Dante's Inferno Hell, or Purgatory, or this or that, or the Lake of Fire, no matter how you shake it, it's, 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 a, it's an ultimate form of punishment. Now they're saying if you fire is, certainly. they're saying if you if you uh, scare kids so what they're really saying is if you scare kids straight it's child abuse so so you're supposed to continue to spoil and coddle modern day American children and sugarcoat everything for them because we mu we we can't traumatize them Ooh. as to the realities of life Ooh. it's not real anyway let us sink our teeth into the readings. Yikes. I must be nice. Excuse me. It must be nice to travel around the country looking for a new job the presidency while still getting paid a substantial salary to perform in your present position as governor of New Jersey. Oh, wow. I was very careful to say getting paid a substantial salary and not to say earning a salary. They don't earn, they just move paper around their desk. It was not very long ago that Governor Christie made a point to say that no state employee should be paid more than the $175,000 that he receives annually. 175 is too much for any of these people. I wonder how many of those employees to whom the governor was referring also receive a substantial allowance as he does to throw parties. I'm willing to bet none of them. In addition, with all the problems and our controversies that have taken place during his watch, the George Bushing, the War George Washington Bridge scandal, mm, yeah. failure to adequately fund the state pension system, and the fact that New Jersey's credit rating has fallen nine times during his term. Why would anyone vote for this man? Just imagine all the problems that he could cause in this country if he had 49 additional states over which he was in charge. Yeah, well, he wants to go to war with China, from what I read. Maybe... The maybe, problems. Maybe he can just eat all the Chinese food and starve them out instead of military. Huh? Would be endless. I hate to think of what certain world leaders might do if a President Christie told one of them to sit down and shut up. I tell you one thing, I guarantee you that that wouldn't work with uh, Vladimir Putin. Or any any um, any leader of any country. The United Nations will be will be livid calling him a a, a dictator and a bully. <clears throat> well, he's he's already he already fits that description. <laughs> it's just on a smaller scale. That's all. Well, that's what this gentleman is right. Yeah, about. smaller scale. What if it's on a larger scale? Well, he, Chris Christie, there is no smaller scale. With Chris, <laughs> with Chris Christie, no such thing. But as far as his political position, yes. Did you see those? Did you see those photos when he was playing softball? Yeah, he looked horrible. It, it, this guy, Humpty Dumpty. People, people called the city had a, a camel toe or something. They were, they were camel making jokes. Or Humpty Dumpty. Nah, you, you know. You can't see his toes. No, a camel toe is like a joke when a when a woman wears her uh, uh, nylon or spandex leotard too tight, and you can see her her va vagina crack. In other words, his is he it, he was busting out of his uniform. Well, you look like a balloon boy. Yeah, he he was very bulbous. Yeah. On the bottom, and uh, yeah. he's like one of those 
all Walmart women, you know, the obese women. Oh that, my God! That with that show all the flaps and everything, the rolls. Oh my God! A novel data mining project reveals evidence that a common heartburn medication taken by more than 100 million people every year is associated with a greater risk of heart attacks. Yeah, what's this? Stanford University research has reported. After combing through 16 million electronic records of 2.9 million patients in two separate databases, the researchers found that people who take the medication to suppress the release of stomach acid are 16 to 21 percent more likely to suffer a heart attack. Because of its design, the study could not show cause and effect. But the researchers did claim that if their technology had been available, such pharmacovigilance algorithms would have flagged this risk as early as the year 2000. The link between the drugs, known as proton pump inhibitors, and heart attacks is strong. The drugs in question are Nexium, Prilosec, Prevacid, Zantac, Pepsid, Wow, Rolaids, Wow, and Tums. Yeah, but I thought Rolaids and Tums were were mostly calcium carbonate. That's well, did you read how much a car a car a calcium carbonate car Calcium are. carbonate is Pilgrim. good for you. Pilgrim. Calcium carbonate is, is just the most basic form of calcium you can ingest. Yeah, but what if it's only 5%? You mean it's the Wait. other crap they throw in there with the calcium carbonate? Okay, yeah. I hear you. Well, usually you get like 500 milligrams, 500 to, to, to Actually, the calcium is not bad. It's 500 milligrams to a, to 1,000 milligrams per tablet. I do not believe that that's at it, all. That's what it says on the box. Let me see that box. The, the typical Tums is, starts at around like 500 milligrams of calcium carbonate. You know, but, but you're saying they're mentioning these two names so there must be other... That's great. There are ingredients which are shared by all of them. Other substances. That's correct. That are the problem. The problem yeah. area. Hillary Clinton's support of automatically registering Americans to vote has sparked a fascinating discussion on the relationship between voting and ignorance. Ezra Klein of Vox points to research finding that those people most involved in politics, often called high information voters, are unusually vulnerable to believing false information. The most informed Republican voters in 2000, for example, believed that the federal budget deficit had risen during Bill Clinton's presidency, when in fact it had been wiped out and replaced by a surplus, which George Bush ended with his stupid tax cuts for the rich. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And his two wars. Yeah, well. And his Medicare Part D, which were all unpaid for, on the arm, on the credit card. Hey, could you imagine, I mean, if, if a corporatist like 
Bill Clinton had this great surplus and a booming economy and with only like, what is it, 39% tax rate on the rich? 39.6. If, if you could, if he, if a corporatist like Bill Clinton could achieve so much, could you imagine what a real progressive could achieve? Yeah. It's mind-boggling. The sky's the limit. Absolutely. In, in a positive way. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Another study showed that high information Democrats, for their part, believed that inflation increased when Ronald Reagan was president, when it substantially decreased. Yeah, after he raised taxes again. <laughs> but as states, slates, excuse me, slates, Jamel Bowie argues in his newsletter, voters' misery of the sort of facts Klein is talking about isn't important for a mass democracy to work. Instead, voters use political parties and interest groups. An informed voter isn't someone who can recite facts. It's simply someone who can identify their interests or those of their community and connect them to the political process. And they gain this knowledge through experience. The Chicago factory worker may not know what the League of Nations is, but he knows his boss steals his wages. He knows that Democrats are for the worker. Oh, yeah. The California store owner couldn't tell you who sits on the Supreme Court, mm -hmm. but he knows that Nixon wanted to be harder on criminals who smashed his window. Bowie's conclusion, these people, the large majority of Americans may not impress you with their intelligence, but they know why they're voting, and they know what they want to get from their choice. As we see from the whole of American history, this is all you really need to have a well-functioning democracy. What about the poor people scraping the bottom of the barrel in Kentucky? They, they, they don't get it. That's a wider issue, and they're not interested in it. He's just telling you here, they are interested in that particular interest, I mean, vote, uh, issue that affects them. Thank you. And so when you expand the pool of potential voters, you don't do much to shrink the average knowledge of the electorate. Yes, for the system to work, most people need someone to advocate for them. In practical terms, this means that whatever they see as their political identity has either an interest group dedicated to it or a political party representing the us voters feel part of, or both. It requires that voters be able to identify those groups and parties and reciprocally those parties and groups try to represent the citizens support them. This doesn't mean voters will be correct in some objective sense when they choose the party they believe supports what they consider us. In a way, it's purely arbitrary whether, using myself as an example, my primary political identity is as a Texan or a Jew, or a parent, or a man, or a political scientist, or a left-hander, or a baseball fan. Or perhaps my primary identity is based on an issue. My views on abortion, or immigration, or whatever. Plenty of political fights are about who the us is that voters identify themselves with. Take the immigration issue. The future of the Republican Party is tied up in the question of whether one large and growing set of citizens will identify themselves primarily as Latinos. 
in which case they'll probably solidify as Democrats. Or whether most of them will choose various other identities on which to base their political views. The more that immigration is an active issue, and the more that some Republican politicians discuss it in ways those voters hear as excluding them from the Republican we, the more likely Democrats are to wind up with a large and growing group of loyal voters. What's important here is how unimportant political information held by ordinary citizens and voters is to the process. As long as I believe that I know which political party represents the us that I feel a part of, and as long as this party tries to represent this group, representation and democracy, will do fine. Mm -hmm. Despair if you'd like, because voters don't know basic facts about how the government works or what it does, but don't think that this will prevent them from being good citizens or mean that democracy can't work. Well, first of all, every American citizen automatically should have the right to vote just based on the fact that they're a citizen of the United States. Well, That's it, theoretically period. they do. Here, but then yeah, as far as this the, uh, the registering and the voter suppression and all this crap mm -hmm. that all these obstacles that, that are put in front of citizens it, that should not play a factor in, 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 in keeping them from the polls. They, their citizenship alone should give them that right. And people, even even the um, the simple-minded simpletons, even they can muster up some common sense and say, am I better off now, four years later, uh, That's what has. with with the people I elected? Am I, is my standard of living better? Is, is the cost of living lower? Is my salary higher? Or, or et cetera, et cetera. Or if you're on a fixed income, you know, uh, uh, you got to ask, it's a common sense question, but you take imbeciles in certain red states like Kentucky, yes, yes, I'm picking on Kentucky. Kentucky! I'm picking on Kentucky despite their bourbon whiskey and the bluegrass and the, um, and what do you call that, Churchill Downs, uh, the Kentucky Derby Ooh. and the uh, the Louisville Slugger. Despite all this, you people are 100% bona fide imbeciles for voting for and re-electing a Mitch McConnell or and or a Rand Paul imbeciles. As the article pointed out, obviously those people who did vote for him believe that he is doing something in their interest. But but they're scraping the they're still scraping the bottom of the barrel. Now what it is. We don't know. I don't know. You have been witnessing capitalism in a conch shell. I would I, I forgot to do this. I would like to formally introduce to you the largest gargoyle in my collection. Right here. He's right here. See him? The largest gargoyle in my collection. And this is the uh, first and last time you will see him on this show because I have already shown all of my larger gargoyles. And then after this, we're, we're just going to have uh, the Reverend Dr. Bill's gargoyles. I have gargoyles? Yeah. I don't have any stinking gargoyles. The thinkers. The thinkers. The, Those guys up there? The thinkers, yeah. Oh, my God. They don't take up too much room. They've been around. Too much uh, space. They've been on camera before. The thinkers. Well, uh, um, um, 
adds a little class to the uh, background. A little gothic class. Whatever. Okay, it is time for uh, the Reverend Dr. Bill's gastronomic delight known as lunch. We will go right now to uh, how to defeat a conservative Bible verses. Simply hit the pause button, read and learn. Followed by our commercial voiceover artist, Mr. William Hamilton Morrill III, with his words of wisdom and promo. Mm. And then we will return to the second half of this week's show. Ah. Uncensored, hard-hitting truth. Ah. <laughs> This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living in the end times. So you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen. For the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Like, for instance, like when the Book of Revelation mentions the um, great whore or the um, a, a, a dragon with so many heads, and, and the you know the word whore is mentioned many times. You you you're you're saying that's the Roman Catholic Church. I'm not saying that. History is saying that. Well, if you look in history, you'll know who that whore, great whore was. To the average layperson, they might not know. They won't know, and that's why it's a hidden secret from them. They are not to know. Then how, if one insists that the Great Horror is the Roman Catholic Church, how do they know it's the Roman Catholic Church? I said, you Maybe. look in history, right. and you see who, who who was the big church that kissed the ass of the uh, emperors. Who was it? The Vatican, the Pope. That church, wasn't it? Yeah. So then we know Revelation 17 is speaking of the Roman Catholic Church. Right. But, Don't but like for you to say that it's meant for some people to understand and for others it, it is not meant for them to understand? It is not their time. That, But you're what you're 
saying is these evangelists that are, that are on TV, they're not supposed to try to interpret the Bible to people that don't get it. Because well, it's not meant for them to get, but we, we, you're interpreting it. Their interpretations are probably wrong in the first place. <laughs> Those preachers. Yeah, a lot of them so are. So what are they doing? Some of them are not even... What well, was the first horse preaching. that came out? False prophet. Thank you! The white horse of the apocalypse. The false, Thank you! False, so false, what are they doing? False church, false prophet. Correct. Joel, false information. Uh, prosperity preachers, Joel Olstein, Pat Robertson, that tells some woman your baby died because uh, uh, maybe, maybe it could have been the next Adolf Hitler. So could she, have been. he was trying to give... Uh, Consolation. Could have been, but why doesn't he say that in uh, when abortion is concerned? Well, you know, we had 35 million uh, abortions this year in America, but uh, hey, maybe we had 35 million uh, potential Hitlers. They don't say that. So it's a good thing, no? <laughs> they don't say that. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I didn't read the whole story. What, what happened? A, a woman uh, was distraught because her, she miscarried or something, or... Something like that. Something like that. Okay. Yeah, but there's always hypocrisy connected to what a conservative says. Always. They always uh, talk to these jumbalonies who are trying to interpret the Bible or put a spin on uh, some uh, thing that we do politically or something mm -hmm. as uh, coming from God. Right. Or having something to do with God. Yeah, they're always you know? talking out of two sides of their mouth. If they're from the right wing, uh, uh, you know, prosperity preachers, uh, it's even, it's a waste. That's a whole talk show unto itself, you know. Uh, well, they feel that if you are prosperous, it is granted by God. Yeah, but isn't it also commanded by the Bible to help the poor if you're oh, prosperous? Oh, indeed it is. But if you're prosperous? Indeed it is. To give them your two coats. And if you have meat, to give it to them too. Invite them to your feast. But they ignore this part. Well, of course they do. It doesn't fit in with their philosophy. Oh, their philosophy. That's correct. Not God's philosophy or the Bible's well, that, message. But that's the problem. You got all these preachers that you're yakking about talking their own philosophies. That's nothing to do with the Bible. Yeah. It's their in own interpretation. The white horse of the apocalypse. Okay. Uh, there you go. He, he's 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 riding. He well, he's been riding for a while. Um, all right. I just want to say thank you to uh, our voiceover artist William Hamilton Morrow the third for your words of wisdom and a promo. Now we return to the show. Sink our teeth into these readings. <laughs> Was the middle of middle of June? Or is it almost. Almost the middle of June. I think today it's a 20th. Oh. 20th. 2015. Yeah. No. <clears throat> All right, where's the one thing I wanted to read here? <coughs> the last thing you read was Chris Christie. <coughs> <coughs> I'm choking to death on Chris Christie. You need something to drink? Uh, no. A team of veterinarians, veterinarians has secured a fiberglass shield on what remained of the face of a rhino that lost its horn and a large section of its face to the, poachers. The poor black rhino is, I think it's extinct. Or black rhino because of greed. Dr. Johan Mares, an equine and wildlife surgeon at the University of Pretoria, equine meaning horse, led the extraordinary effort to save the life of the four year old rhino, now named Hope. The operation was conducted on the sedated 1.8 ton 
animal in a muddy enclosure on the edge of Shamwari Game Reserve. You just can't believe that somebody from our own species can do that to an animal. Marais said of the gaping wound that exposed part of the rhino's skull and narrowly missed his eyes. South Africa, which harbors about 20,000 rhinos, roughly 90% of the world's population, recorded more than 1,200 poached rhinos last year. Reflecting growing demand in parts of Asia, where rhino horn is believed to have medicinal benefits. Did you get that operative word there? Believed. Believed. There is no scientific evidence to support that. The horn is made of keratin, a protein also found in human fingernails. It's compressed um, carrots and <clears throat> I'll give you a picture later when I finish this other reading here. I see a lot of very upsetting photos on the internet of animal abuse, like Ooh, let's say uh, yeah. survivors from dog fighting and all kinds of animal abuse and. Uh, human race is indeed wicked species. New York could become the first United States city to require warning labels on high salt dishes at chain restaurants. Wait a minute. Warning labels at on what? High salt. High salt. Yeah. What about all the other chemicals that are in? Uh, stop it! One thing at a time. GMOs. And all that. <laughs> They're worried about salt. Salt is a, is a basic macro mineral. Well, not eight thousand or nine thousand uh, milligrams a day. No, but you but know. but there are obviously other chemicals that are worse than salt. The city's health department will propose today. <sighs> that all chain restaurants add a salt shaker-like symbol on their menus next to products that contain more than the recommended daily limit of 2300 milligrams of salt. Heaven forbid they should do this with high glycemic index foods, sugar, refined carbs. That's the real culprit. Well, maybe they will eventually. Yeah. Well, they... they but Bloomberg, Bloomberg is out of office now, so maybe they... Well, the, the big... Yeah. What was the deal with the, the big sodas. soda? The yeah. big soda. It's not the big soda versus the little soda. It's the companies making the soda that are putting God knows how many teaspoons of white sugar in one can of soda. Mm. But if you go to other countries, the same soda from the same company as one fraction of the sugar. You figure that out. Public health advocates hailed the proposal as a pioneering step to tackle the major problem. Salt producers called it off base. And some restaurant restaurateur said it would needlessly mire already burdened eateries in more bureaucracy. Ah, horseshit. Just put out proper healthy food for the consumer. Cut the bullshit. Stop whining. Do the right thing. Uh, and now, uh, uh, excuse me. Slow down the pace a bit. Here we go. Both my husband and I are professionals. Wow. We live in a beautiful and affluent part of the country. Affluent. We have two sons 
ages 14 and 10, some time ago we discovered that our older son had access pornography. Remember what Archie Bunker used to say? He called it hard corn, hard corn, porn. no, hard porn, wait a minute. <laughs> hard porn pornography. Oh, pornography. Yeah, hard porn pornography. Archie Bunker and all in the family. <laughs> By creating a false account on our computer, after confessing, he seemed contrite <laughs> and promised us that he wouldn't do it again. Yeah, sure. We he's decided. A young, he's a young man, you know. His hormones are flying around, man. Another chance. Another chance. You're not gonna stop them, them hormones. A few months later, we gave him a smartphone for his 14th birthday. Can't stop a whore from moaning. <laughs> hormones. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! You know what makes all hormones? My shillelagh keeps on hooking on to my levity bells. What? Don't pair. What do you call a whore with a runny nose? Full. Ah! Don't pay her. Oh you God. ain't gonna stop. That, that's all, that's the, the beginning. If they're, if they're a male, you're not gonna stop them from doing those things. But we chose one that didn't have any bells and whistles. We made him sign the contract. And just for good measure, I asked my younger son to hold on to the locked phone once the boys came home from school. Oh yeah, make the kids sign a contract never to think contract about contract for the phone about girls naked, huh? Contract for the phone. In other words, he has to pay for it. You mean the smartphone? Smartphone. You're not not just the phone phone. Right. Oh, okay. I found out yesterday that on the days that my younger son was at school for after-school activities, my older son was home watching porn! Well, I mean, alone or? Obviously. You don't have a girlfriend, right? He's 14. Nah, it's kind of young. It's kind of young to be watching stuff like that. I mean, in my opinion, 14. I didn't realize he was... That's the oldest? Yeah, no, no, he, uh, that's too young. I, I don't blame them. My husband and I are stunned, shocked, well, repulsed. Uh, th th they're overreacting. And have no idea where to go. We are worried that if I, I enroll him in a group for porn addiction, he will learn other things that we would rather he not be exposed to. He's too young to be diagnosed with that problem. Uh, hey, you know, when I was 12 years old, um, us, us You young, were banging the pillowcase. No, us young men, <laughs> us young whippersnappers, we talked dirty huh? about girls behind their back. And, you know, and this kid, know, this is, kid four, is probably waxing the bishop while he's watching This kid four. is 14, which means he most likely is either in ninth grade or or first year of high school. You know, he's not he's not a baby per se. He's he's a teenager. I think they're overreacting, is what I'm trying to say. The parents. I am trying to find research about Ugh. this, but I'm not getting the information I am seeking. Other than this, my son gets all, my son gets all, as, oh, all A's. Blow, buy him a blow-up doll or something for his birthday. He plays sports, he reads voraciously. Voraciously? Oh good, let him read porn novels. Give him Hustler magazine. Yeah, he'll, he'll read that good. voraciously. And in general, he appears to be a responsible kid. I attack that buffet voraciously until I notice the downgrade of the quality of food. Shame on you, Flaming Grill Buffet in East Rutherford, New Jersey. 
I'm and just, sir. 17 South what? Your son created a fake account to view porn at home. And your longer term reaction was to give him a smartphone and have his 10 year old brother confiscated after school. Really? What your older son's choice to return to his habit means it is more than youthful curiosity. All he's got to do is, he, is, is clear his uh, uh, history, history, is his URL history. You should do everything possible to control his access and he be alert about your younger son's interests also. Yeah, you know, it could cut into his homework and study time. It could become quite addictive. Uh, you know, that's the worst I could think of. I mean, as far as the sexuality goes, for a young male it's normal, but, you know. It's also normal, according to Reich. Wilhelm, yeah. that when you get off, naturally, your mind clears. That's correct. It is better for you. Your your pent up stress level energy, your your pent up stresses in your body dissipate, and your that pent up energy you would yeah. be using for violence. And things yeah. of that nature. I, Negative I, quality. What's the word? Uh, 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 what's the euphoric feeling? Is that endorphins? No, that, they say it is, but it is not. In other words, there's a. It, it's similar to after a good workout. It's like the mind becomes very peaceful and serene after you shoot your load, the mother load. Now, however, ejaculation. If you shoot that load with or, all kinds of guilt, or big stuff, orgasms for a woman, huh? If you shoot that load with a lot of guilt and things, it doesn't work well. You see? Yeah, because the, these be are natural. these are people that that care a hell of a lot what their parents and relatives think, and, and unlike myself, who is a, is a independent, free, critical thinker likes to call his own shots in life, I can care less, you know what I'm saying? But some people, it affects what mommy and daddy think. There is a lot of information on the increase of teens becoming addicted to internet porn readily available. Well, it's free. Including scholarly research papers it's all free published now. by the National Institutes of Health. This information, like the porn your son consumes, is just a click away. Yeah, just you just go to Google, and I, I mean, I'm, I don't want to endorse any Maybe site. Maybe she's uh, computer illiterate. <coughs> you know, <coughs> doesn't know about Google. Just, just type in free porn in a browser, and, and you. Well, get she doesn't want to do that. No. Anybody, wants to type in. Listen, anybody who doesn't know how to Google search something sh should get a, uh, a, a brain transplant with a parrot or something. That's like 40% of the people in the United States. Come on, are you serious? Yeah. There are people that do not know how to go to a search window on a they browser. They don't have computers. What idiots. Well, then they're in the Stone Age. Well, then they belong with the dinosaurs buried. Do you have the way to Come give on. them the thousand dollars to buy the computer? A thousand, my ass. You can go to Best Buy and buy a Toshiba laptop for like under three hundred dollars. Come maybe on. Maybe they don't have the three hundred dollars. Well, how fucking poor are these people in America? Well, they're poor, but they're spending their money on other stuff. In America, America. They don't have 300 bucks to, to buy a good PC or a, uh, a laptop? I would assume that if you went out right now on this block or another block in Lodi yeah. and you chose at random 10 houses and you walked up to the door and say at the end of the week when you get your paycheck do you have $300 to go out and buy a computer? First question will be: Do you have a do you have a, a, a and I'll computer? bet you eight out of ten will say no. Do you have a laptop, a PC, or a no? Tablet? I don't care if they have it. 
I'm, we're talking about people who don't have one, and you say can just lay out the money right just like that. Well, if you one. don't have one, they're they're very affordable nowadays. <laughs> You know what I mean? Not for the person who's living paycheck to paycheck. Well, you're that's my point. You're talking about real poor areas. No, I'm not. I'm talking about the working Listen, if I people. see if I see minority kids walking around with smartphones, teenagers in high school. You know what I mean? In in a blue collar neighborhood, not hoity toity. And I and they all have they all whip out that smartphone. Yeah. You mean to tell me there's a good there's nine times out of ten they have internet access on that smartphone. Yeah. There's a good chance that they got a laptop sitting at home somewhere. Maybe, maybe not. I'm saying they're forty percent that don't. Whatever the reasons are. Well, that's pretty high. I don't know about that that I know uh, I know unemployment levels uh, numbers are very high but but what they ain't they're five point five. People <laughs> People without um without They're internet, the same as they were under Bush. People without internet access. I don't know, man. Why would why would they need internet access if they don't have a computer? Look, even <sighs> even people on social services have a fucking laptop or or a smartphone. I got news for you, Pally. If the Republicans find out about that, they're going to say, we are the only country in the world with our poor having laptops. Well, we uh, need to take them away. People like uh, Joni Ernst uh, feel that uh, the poor having an air conditioner and a refrigerator That's is correct. considered high, highfalutin. That's correct. I guess so her, what about a computer? I guess her vision of the poor is, is sleeping in a cardboard box. Well, that's what they they do with their cuttings. They force people to sleep in cardboard boxes, don't they? Then why and how are they able to give away billions of tax dollars to the rich? Because they're in charge of the purse. So is okay. total ultimate selfishness with these conservative career politician elitists. It is it is the purest. But they're protecting Form. our country. How are they protecting our country? They have the moral high ground. They are patriots. Because they say so. They are Christians. Prove it. Ah! Now you seek the proof, eh? Prove it. Yeah. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. Y you know, you can't, you can't, you can't say that somebody's perception of something is real just because it comes out of their mind you know that, that anybody can imagine and assume anything well they do don't they but they have one thing that the person who just imagined this like the nut or the schizophrenic they put theirs into laws they make laws that's correct just like they're making laws in all these red states out west about abortion you know, and uh, and and uh, of course, looking for any excuse imaginable to throw people off of uh, social services. Yeah. Any dumb excuse imaginable. Yeah. But the abortion thing, they still don't get it. That a fertilized egg is the same in a human as it is in a chicken. It is not a. It is not a baby chick, and it is not a baby human. It is a simply a fertilized egg. Now that is a perception, that is a belief not based on any facts. They believe they're doing God's work. Why, they have a bat phone to God? Obviously. Obviously? Why do, why, why do you say that if it's preposterous? It, it, how do you have a, you have a bat phone? Oh look, oh look at me, I have a magic shillelagh. I, I can talk to God too, what would you say? Tell Reverend Bill to stop playing devil's advocate with, uh, with Republicans. I don't know. He does that all the time. Yeah, no, that's not do? devil's advocate. That's telling you what is. What is is what could be proven. No, they don't no, do but that. But who cares what they think? Because they put it into law. What is is what can be proven. This James. this shillelagh is made of blackthorn wood. It, that's re real. This is reality. 
was pro prohibition reality? No, that that they was put a, it into law. That was a crazy, insane. And uh, so is their ideas uh, uh, on abortion. Uh, uh, morality law against against booze, against liquor. And so is their ideas on abortion, and a thousand other things which they claim they get from God. How do they feel about people eating scrambled eggs for breakfast? That those are eggs that were not fertilized. Those were they could have been perpetual chicken. They lives. don't care about chicken. Cut it out. But it's they human, babies. but they also don't care about the the already born children. Oh! Talk about morality. The already born. That's children. correct. Let them starve to death. The unborn they care about. What is there like seventeen million kids in America that uh, uh, go to bed hungry? Yeah, in America. Every day. How about that? In America, yeah. You know, we can go on and on about forced vaccines and all that stuff, but that's different. That's depopulation by the elitist. But we're talking about reality, perce well, wait a minute. perceived reality. Wait a minute. What? But what is their what is their uh, agenda for that? Well they claim they're they're saving children from illness. Yeah, they're saving they're trying to say, say that they will save but, but the there are more children vaccinated there, there are more children and everything if yeah. you they don't want you coming around with a disease and they're not vaccinated and giving it to them. That's their agenda. What are the, what are the uh, st statistics of vaccines success rate? Well, we don't care rate? about that. Why? Because we are in a free nation, supposedly. Right. So a parent has the freedom to say, I don't want it. It's their kid. Yeah, what about, the, what about the freedom of saying, no, you're not going to shove your version of Christianity down my child's throat? Well, you see, Republicans they talk about freedom. Otherwise, I pay I pay taxes, and maybe maybe uh, uh, maybe I'm a Hindu. Maybe I don't want your your uh, your crazy version of, of of the Christian Bible shoved down my well, kid's throat. Well, and I pay know. taxes. I'm not saying I'm a Hindu. I'm what just, does paying taxes have to do with anything? Well, you're contributing to the United States of America as so? a citizen. So, so why should somebody force their religion on your children? They shouldn't, but that has nothing to do with paying taxes. Religions don't pay taxes. Well, it, it gives you... Religions don't pay taxes. Well... They are tax exempt. All right, so, all right, so we're talking about constitutional law to protect people's rights. First Amendment, right? We're talking about freedom. Talking about freedom of religion. No. Freedom of choice. Yeah. Yeah. I don't choose to be vaccinated. Period. Right. And I don't choose to have your your cult being shoved down my children's throat in school because they're my kids. That you know, we might as well throw everything in the same pot. Yeah. Freedom of choice. Exactly. Right. But they only bring out. They trot out the freedom thing the only one that's in their best interest. See? Look, any 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 spoiled selfish prick in charge with power can play the game any way they want. It's like a no kid. It's like a rigged courtroom, a kangaroo court, you know, you know, guilty, guilty, hang him, guilty. The whole thing is rigged. <laughs> and the rich are the riggers. The rich and the corporations are the riggers. Right. And who rigs them? Ah. I don't care who rigs them. Why are you bringing that in? New World Order? Secret Society? Oh, forget that crap. That's all crap. No, it's not. Prove it. There's a lot of there's a lot of videos on YouTube about the Prove secret it. societies. And how much of that has to do with our economy? Well, they claim they tell our presidents what to do. Fine. And but our president is rich. So therefore, it's the rich and the corporations, well, period. Well, that is one thing that congressmen... I don't care about the Rothschilds. That is one thing that congressmen, senators, and governors, and presidents have in common, whether they be Democrat or Republican. They're all, they're all they are wealthy. financially independent, wealthy people. They are aristocrats in our society. They are multimillionaires. Which we weren't supposed to have. Listen, if they wanted to not work tomorrow, they wanted to quit their their jobs of whatever they get 
175,000 to 300,000 a year. They could very easily live high on a hog doing nothing but sitting at a pool drinking Mai Tais if they wanted to. So they are not wanting for anything. They, they, they eat the best food, they get the best health care. They live and they want to continue that power. Well, nobody's taking their, their, their millions away. Well, who's taking their millions away? That's why they gerrymander <laughs> to make sure they even, continue to get the votes of even, their supporters. Even if America is wealthy, whether you be Democrat or Republican or Independent, even if you pay the original 90% tax rate, you will still live high on the hog. They will still be considered rich. So there. Yes, but what has happened over the years, the rich and the corporations have, they have brainwashed and convinced those below them that not us. It's not good to tax the rich. Not us. Not the people on we our job. Not the people on our groups. Okay. Uh, you're talking about all the imbeciles in the general population. Yeah, all the supporters. Yes. Of that way of thinking. Right. The, the, the tea baggers. Hey, I, I, I got him on right. Uh, this new guy is posting shit on one of my groups now. Uh, 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 he posts a banner with uh, Barack Obama in a in a little uh, a ballerina costume, saying he's not. You know, he's not going to. He's not protecting our country. He's not defending our borders. And I said to him, the last time American borders were threatened by invasion was World War II. Well, he couldn't give does, me an answer. How does he account for the fact? He couldn't give me an answer. That Barack Obama has deported more immigrants than George W. Bush. Because this guy's probably a racist Southern. Believe in what? Crap. He Un. Proven right. crap. No matter what I say to this prick, he keeps on posting racist banners about Barack Obama. Because he's a fool. He has no nothing to back up what he has to say. And you know what? I'm, I am going to kick his ass right out of the group. I, I, I gave him a chance, and he's proven to be a racist piece of shit, which I told him he was. <laughs> no! Uh, they are, they are, what they are. You can't, you can't uh, uh, handle these people with kid gloves. You know, you can't be Elizabeth Warren and say, oh, my Republican colleagues. They're not your Republican colleagues. They're demons. They're, and this is a real war. It is a class war and a spiritual war. And you, you, you pusillanimous, pipsqueak, ultra-liberals out there better get this through your head and learn how to fight and not be so goddamn pacifist. Continue. Back to the young boy waxing his bishop. Yeah, we really digress. The current research on the impact of pornography on the adolescent brain is alarming. Oh, well, well, we, we were I pretty... thought part of pornography, if you took it to its uh, ultimate conclusion, is it had to do with the dick, or the, the vagina, not the brain. <laughs> yeah, but we were we were pretty perverted. When is we, our brain having an orgasm, or is when, it the you know? When I was in the genitalia, it's the genitalia. But when I was in grammar, uh, in grammar school and high school, we were pretty perverted. Oh yeah. No, no, uh, uh, we were, and this was in the seventies. So you know, it's like maybe boys will be boys. We used to ride around in cars without seatbelts. True. We rode around in the back of pickup motorcycles. There were no, there was no. We hel rode bikes. No helmet. Without helmet. No helmet was. Etc. 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 Teens who consume violent porn. Now you see how she did this. She's she's putting she, violence into she, it. She switched from porn to violence. Porn. See, this person sounds like a right wing fundamentalist jerk. She's trying to demonize all. She's trying. Somebody's yeah. trying to demonize all porn. Here. Ah, now you're talking. Now you're talking. Starting to sound familiar. Yeah. Like what happened to a gentleman we know that had a publication. 
The is great it? majority of violent porn involves violence. Whoop de doo. Duh. Yeah. Are much more likely to engage in aggressive or violent sexual behavior. Well, he or she that doesn't get off is going to be ah. a lot more violent than he or she that, that gets off. Ah. I'm telling you right now. Ugh. And they are much more likely to engage in aggressive or violent sexual behavior and are far more likely to become sexually active at an earlier age and to have unrealistic views about sex and relationships. Your family needs intervention and professional help and support. Anxiety may be an underlying issue for him. At the outset, you and your husband should try to reduce your hours at work so one can be home when the kids are there after school. Yeah, you know, people get, especially kids, you know, they, get, they can get bored. They can be feel very stressed. Sometimes it's, it's like a person that overeats. You know, it, 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 the sexuality could be... Um, like a, a, a way of pacifying stress. I, I watched... Uh, Relieving anxiety. The orgasm. Yeah. Well, I, when I watched that great documentary about Babe Ruth, he did everything to excess, Ooh. whether it be drinking, See? eating. He had girls brought to his room every day. He was a bigger party animal than me and all my friends put together. Babe Ruth, back in the day, was the king of party animals. He had orgies, he had he, he smoked pipes and uh, cigars, he, he he was on a train going from point A to point B, he, he drank a whole quart of scotch all by himself, he, but he wasn't drunk when he got off the train. Yeah, Babe Ruth was a big partier, but th what happened was Babe Ruth was a poor kid that was neglected uh -huh. by his parents, his father was a saloon owner, and he was sent to a special Catholic school for boys because oh, he was a troubled child. So maybe this 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 uh, urge for doing everything in, in excess when the babe became older, maybe it was tied in to childhood because they said well, of course he it was. they said he loved children. He was he was his happiest around children. So uh, he can identify Much with like Pee Wee Herman? He, yeah, he, he had an, an, an affin, affi, affination. What? Affinity. Affinity towards children. He was very good to them, generous with them. He was very happy when he was around them. Uh -huh. So maybe they reminded him of his childhood in the uh, St. Mary's School for Troubled Boys or whatever, or, or his growing up. You know, but what I'm trying to say is, is people having an excessive desire, a compulsion of some sort, it could be a way to pacify anxiety. I apologize for this construction noise you may hear in the background. All right, it's not us. Along with professional counseling and parental involvement, support and communication are crucial for your sons. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, a lot of it is, uh, is stress can be stress-induced and not so much about sexuality. The kid could be bored, he could be very nervous, you know, I mean, uh, you know, uh, uh, compulsive eaters and some people who snack and are overweight do this. Uh, other, hap uh, other negative habits mm -hmm. could be tied into this also, you know, but uh, <coughs> Hey, I, I learned things about Babe Ruth that I, I didn't know before. I have to finish the documentary. It's on YouTube. I am 32 and need advice on setting personal boundaries in my relationships. Simply put, I have a guy friend who has feelings for me wow. that I don't have for him. Usually that's why they're male friends. Women size up men early on, whether or not they're boyfriend material or or sucker. I mean, male friend material. Big shoulder. Yeah, the the free shrink, the free psychologist 
where they can uh, cry on his shoulder and get moral support from and everything. But let me tell you something. He might get a pat on the back. He might hear kind words from her. And she'll say great things to her friends, but he won't get laid. It's the bad boy that gets... We dated briefly. In a sack with her, her. yeah. But I broke it off. Okay, it's that late. And we have continued as friends for two years. No good. You got it, you got it, you got it. If you want to be more than friends, you can't allow yourself to be put in the friends category by a woman. He knows I'm not interested in an intimate relationship with him, but however, he has made it clear through words and behavior that he is in love with me. No, he's, he's, he's hoping that by being Mr. Nice Guy to her long enough that she will take him as, as uh, her one and only, which is not impossible. It can happen, but chances are it's not going to happen. Almost to the point of obsession. Yeah. I feel he doesn't respect my personal space. Yeah, see, the poor, the poor sap is being a sucker. We argue, especially if he ends up crashing at my house after a night at the pub. Yeah. You see, either, either the chemistry is there from day one or it's not. It, you, you can't, you can't, and th this deal about scientific matching, you know, eHarmony commercials, I don't believe it. The chemistry controls all. I don't care if the man or a woman is a carbon copy of you. It's all in the chemistry. I firmly tell him he can only sleep on the couch, but He'll weasel his way into my bed. Yeah, because he'll be asleep. He'll be on the couch thinking about her. Having a little dancing, uh, little sugar plums dancing in Why his head. Why does she allow him in her bed? I'll tell you a little story when you're done. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I feel I'm enabling him in his clingy behavior because I don't want to hurt his feelings. He's clingy because he wants to get in her pantaloons. I want to be able to act assertively with him and others. I want to stop being so passive, especially with men. Please advise me how to work on this. Answer. The man you describe appears to be under the impression that he can wear you down if he keeps at it long enough. Yeah, he's using the woodpecker technique, nagging her profusely. He isn't interested in being your friend. He wants, he wants that, to be your lover. He wants that brajol. He wants her. He wants that bearded cherry stone clam. Because you aren't interested in him. Quit allowing him to sleep at your place. She might be leading him on by doing this. If he becomes so drunk he can't drive himself home, get him a taxi. Allowing him to sleep over and weasel himself into your bed sends a mixed message. Yes, exactly. And that is a mistake. Mm -hmm. That's true. To create effective boundaries, you must be clear about the messages you send to others. What you appear to need to work on is the ability to say... No. No. And that's what today's parents must learn also. Try it. With their kid, try it. You'll like it. Yeah, we're talking about the no's that mean no. Well, yeah. Years ago, I... I, I think I know about yeah. sleeping in my bed when, you know... Well, you want you need. I, I want you to sleep on a friggin' couch. Years ago, I uh, I had this friend. Uh, she's a, an accountant uh, from the Philippines. Uh, it wasn't uh, nothing serious. Nothing happened between us. But she she's a nice woman. She stood over a relative's house in um, somewhere in I think Staten Island or something. And there was a she had a um, they had a young boy, a teenage boy. 
and she was sleeping on a couch and mm -hmm. and he uh, came over to her in the dark and climbed on top of her with a, with a very a very granite uh, uh, heart on oh. he had an erection he was young and uh, he must have been in bed fantasizing about her the old you know the uh, attractive sexy older woman deal and and um, he said she says no you mustn't do this you cannot do this first of all he's a minor and she's an adult that's big red flag problem number one huge so she let him lie on her just a few seconds too long and then she says okay she says I'm not gonna allow anything but you could you could play with my breasts that talk about mixed messages this is going a little too far well it didn't go any farther than that and I said I when she told me the story she says I I feel so bad I couldn't I couldn't make him come I says first of all couldn't want, make him come you well, wanna, he probably came you wanna you wanna get arrested and deported <laughs> You know, and or, or what comes first? You, well, you got to get. You can't get arrested. Then, the, well, yeah, you you get arrested because he's a minor. You know, you can't be doing this. You know, and you and you you shouldn't be feeling guilty about him not shooting his load. He probably did in his pants, but you know, big mistake was taking your top, pulling your top up. You know, for oh, this God. kid. Yeah. So yeah. So what I mean is. The kids have their curiosities and they have their raging hormones and uh, none of it is abnormal. Uh, now suppressing it all is very abnormal, which is what these right-wing zealot nuts do. That's how they make more zealot nuts. They make, they create zealot <laughs> nuts, They maybe they create pedophiles, uh, maybe they, they just create wacky people like Rick Santorum and Mike mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Huckabee and John Hagee and people like this, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but um, this other girl, she did send this man mixed messages. If you really have decided you just want somebody as a platonic male friend, and you you don't feel any chemistry then you need to make your nose real nose you can't say no and then have the dude sleep in your living room no your, in your bed on your living room sofa the, yeah and then he makes his way well, what happened he ended up sleeping in her bed yes he sleeps in the bed he didn't he didn't she didn't chase him out of the bedroom no she well, can't well, say no what do you want what, what does she expect this guy to to think I don't know she can't I, say no I mean he's like okay in her bed she can't say no. she's right next to him yeah. of course he's gonna get ideas oh, he already had ideas before he went into the bed well, that just made things worse well anyway that's that's a wrap what do you say we you, could do unless another you one. got you got something I got another one. All right, let's get rid of this. Thing. Am I asking too much to expect my husband to eliminate all contact and exposure to his former emotional affair partner? He feels my requests are unreasonable and continues to attend social functions, knowing full well that she will also be in attendance. Well, I don't. I don't blame her. Honestly, I don't blame her. If, if she's if he's running into her in person, I, I don't blame her. He remains friendly with her as though nothing happened. That's not true. This affair nearly ended our marriage. And I long for a total commitment without further exposure to his past addiction. My former therapist felt that my husband should understand my position and be willing to make that commitment to me and to our marriage. I agree. I agree with her and the therapist. I relive the entire heartbreaking period of our marriage each time I see him choose to be around her. What is your advice? 
you equate your husband's emotional fare with an addiction. So yes, it would be easiest on you if your husband would agree to totally abstain from social contact with this person. Yeah, but, but if it was an addiction, wouldn't he have he other... Won't. He won't, but wouldn't he have other women if it was an, addi an addiction? So the only question you need to answer for yourself now is, what's next for me? Yeah. My own take is this. What's next for her? If your husband had an emotional affair and then is able to run into this person and act as if nothing had happened, isn't that a good thing? Well, when you say emotional affair, this includes uh, sexual encounters, right? I presume so. Yeah, because they don't specify. Right. If he acted all weird, secretive, intimate, that would be an indication that this contact was a trigger for him. Yeah. But really, it seems to be a trigger for you. If your husband truly is addicted, and you want to stay with him, then you should take a page out of the addiction and recovery playbook and understand that you are powerless to control him. I'm, I'm on the, the magical conch to the God. The conch to God? Yeah. Fine. Conch shell to God, yeah. What'd you say? Who does he want to run for president? Well, well, he, he, he agrees with you. He's oh. not political whatsoever, oh. not at all. But he he knows who who's lying and and who is uh, who is not who are not Christians. That's the right. If you've been bad or good, that's the right. Good or goodness that's the right wing. <laughs> They're lying. They're using uh, God and the Bible as a front. Well, wait a minute. I named about five or six uh, people who. Michelle Bachman, Santorum, uh, uh, George W. Bush, etc. Told, God told them to run for office. Oh, really? Yeah. So, um, if God told them to run, then uh, why do they not follow the word that's in the Bible about the rich helping the poor and giving to the poor? How come they want to let the poor starve and die? I guess they rewrote their Bibles. If they know, if they know God, uh, uh, if they communicate with God and know Him so well, well, right? that would be if they took the truth from God. But they're rewriting it. They have their own. Well, maybe yeah. it's not God they're talking to. They're rewriting the Bibles to be more conservative friendly. Right. Well, like I said, maybe the God that conservatives speak to is not God. That's correct because God is not the author of confusion. So therefore, G.W. Bush did not speak to God, he spoke to the devil. Right. Because the devil is the author of confusion. And that's what happened in Iraq. Total confusion. Oh, well, that war prophet's hearing. You know, there are still numbskulls out there that believe that uh, today's wars are a fight for yeah, America's for freedom, freedom and, and to protect our borders. Okay, exactly. You believe this crap? You may choose to love him through this, or you may choose to leave him over this. Well, I'm going to side with the wife and the therapist. Uh, he needs to cease and desist his actions. Okay. Thank you for joining us for this week's Uncensored Hard-Hitting Truth. And, of course, Capitalism in a Conch Shell. And we'll see you next time. I know it's an unseasonably hot and humid, balmy, uh, I guess, beginning of June. It's not even the first day of summer yet. Which is, isn't it funny that the first day of next week, the summer season, June 21st, right? It happens to be the longest day of the year. You would think the longest day of the year will be the middle of summer. No, it's the first day of summer. Well, How that is. why is the uh, new year January 1 instead of spring equinox, as it is in the Bible?
Yeah, who changed everything? Ah! Old Bonesy is doing a dance. I wonder who changed the, uh, the, uh, the Sabbath to Sunday. No, all, all those phony baloney counterfeit Christians did. Because the Sabbath is Saturday. Uh, the Roman Catholic Church did. If you want to call them Christians? They're part fine. of they're part of the uh, the right wing uh, counterfeit Christian uh, group. Yeah. You know, cultism, and, and, until Martin Luther came around and, and challenged them. Yeah, that worked out well, didn't it? Yeah, but at least you had. You see, what happened was you split them up into more division. You you split them up into a thousand and one different forms of organized religion, mm -hmm. Protestants, and then out of that, out of all those different Protestant denominations, they all started becoming right-wing zealot fundamentalist kooks, a lot of them. Like in other words, how many actually focused and, and, and kept with Martin Luther and an accurate Bible interpretation. There wasn't any actually. You know what I mean? And then it took Herbert W. Armstrong to come and straighten things out. Restore. Right. Things so, that should have been in the Bibles for those 2,000 years. Right. So Martin Luther may have enlightened people as to the Roman Catholic Church and the Pope Problems. at that time. Problems. But, but it didn't solve anything. Because then you had the same zealot mentality mm -hmm. with all these other Calvin, Pro Protestant churches, Calvinism, etc. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when a organization, you know, gets power. It starts spreading its viruses around the world. Okay? And as far as right wing is concerned, we had right wings back with Assyria, Babylon, kings, Nimrod, when these you, were right wingers. When you say right winger, you mean a fascist, a totalitarian... Exactly oligarchy type of system? Exactly. Where, where the elitists rule and own everything? That's correct. That is correct. And there's, no, and there's no middle class? Actually, the middle class, uh, it, it sort of existed like in England, 1700s, 1800s. Well, you had the people... With the mercantiles. You had people with professions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, yeah. you had uh, John the Blacksmith, and then there you is. had uh, yes. the yes. candlestick maker. Uh -huh. yes. And you had the butcher and the baker, yeah. and the... Yeah. And so on. You had... But a real, uh, a middle class existed in America for like 50 years after FDR. Or the farmer. Period. I forgot, the farmer. Period. Well, the farmer... Uh, uh, it's never been classed as a mercantilist. No. He is an agriculturist. He is a uh, barter system. Well, he you, is, just, um, you just had farms of different sizes. If you had a big, I'll say there, son, I'll say a plantation. Yes, yes. If you had a plantation and you had a lot of people working your land for you, you, became, and, you then you are a big right shot. Wing, right winger. Right. Right. If you are a, a medium-sized, family-owned farm, then you might be mi a middle-class farmer. I'm trying to think about the economic system that was in effect before, you know, with the farmers and etc. and the serfs. Before and the, the Industrial Revolution? Or, or Middle before, Ages? Before. Before. Middle Ages, you know, before the Industrial Revolution. Talking about like feudal? feudal it's it's out of my head. Feudalism? Feudalism, yes. Bingo. Feudalism. That's where the farmers classified it. They, but they actually were allowed to own land and till it? A small piece of land that they tilled for the big guy 
and they were allowed to keep a little bit of the produce. Oh, but the, the big guy took a big ninety percent or whatever, a big chunk of what they grew. Yeah. Oh, so that kind of sucked. Well, yeah, <laughs> but the peel, the poor, and the 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 downtrodden, and the, those uh, below the uh, the kings and the queens and etc. At that time, they were they've suffered throughout history. Yeah. Now in Cuba, nothing new. In Cuba, from what I understand. Everyone that grows anything has to contribute a certain small percentage to the the commons, to the the government, you know, whatever. You, uh, and if you if you own a restaurant, you can have a restaurant, but it has to be like all family working there. Like I don't know the setup of yeah. Whether I watched, it's total socialism, whether it's this that. I watched the documentary Cuba. about about know. about Cuba. Of, of course, there outstanding mechanics and auto body people because all we know is it's totalitarian yeah, yeah that's all yeah it's not it's not exactly like Karl Marx planned it it's totalitarian anyway take care have a good week there's no holidays coming up this Monday right? Father's Day oh I thought we had that already is that, no it, it, it's Sunday no tomorrow oh yeah nobody nobody pays nobody attention to father anybody could be a Faja and I don't want no stinking tie. Yeah, oh, what a boring, what a boring present to give a father. <laughs> Unbelievable. But anybody could be a father. You just, you just a fertilizer. You're, a, you're a pollinator. Uh, a bee. A bee. Yeah. I'm a bumblebee. Yeah. You're spreading your bumble around. All right. Say, say so long to these jabronis. So long, people. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.